In a natural environment, the newborn has to stand up as soon as possible to escape predators. Here, the mother uses her horn to prompt him. Dorothée prays for this small miracle to happen with Beth. Good girl, Miss Galea. The mother immediately shows signs of affection for her baby. This bond is essential for its survival. A bond that Sheila will have to create too. Sariki has surprised everyone and given birth a month early. She gave birth when we were having tea break and we missed it all because we were sat having a cup of tea. We just really got in. <laughs> Sariki's new baby is a boy, which the team have named Tombol. For the first few weeks, a baby orangutan is all about just cuddling up to mum and suckling. The world is probably just a, a mass of ginger hair and every so often finding a lactating nipple. <laughs> At the moment, Sariki's a little bit tired. I think the birth sort of taken a little bit out of her, and there was a fair amount of blood sort of left over from the birth. And she may not have as much energy as she did 10, 20 years ago, so she may just be feeling a little bit more out of it than she did previously. C'est super mignon. C'est toujours beau à voir. C'est magique. Oh la tête. Sheila has given birth to a baby boy. This is little Kyra, and she's our first ever sun bear cub. I had a bit of a moment, you know, when you just go, oh my god, there's a cub. I've seen pictures of sun bear babies before, but it's never the same as seeing one for real. And we're so proud, because look at her, she's adorable. It's so nice to actually see her in the flesh. Sun bears climb high into the rainforest canopy to steal birds' eggs and evade predators. She's going to need to learn to climb almost as soon as she can walk because in the wild, the cubs would go up a tree to get away from any danger. She's still learning, so she is going to have falls and tumbles and things. Munch tries to help out. <laughs> but he's struggling to get up the rock. It's very daunting for the little chicks when they first go out there, because they're used to just being going around in a little gang of four. And then, of course, when they go in that big pool, there's 44 all together. So it's, it's a case of learning. The youngsters have to learn quick, and if they don't, they probably die. With squares on his own and his friends now cornered by adults, just getting through their first day unscathed is not going to be easy. When the other pups learned to swim, Bo had been too weak to join in. But now he's getting private lessons from his doting dad. Wallace, he's been very supportive of Bo. He's maybe giving him a, a bit more of his time and making a special effort to help him progress. And these days, 
Mum, Annie, is also taking a full part in parenting duties. Now Annie's not constantly feeding the pups. She has a bit more energy um, to put into the parenting side to help Wallace out. She still has fun with her pebbles, though. It's really, really nice that they've all made it, but especially him. He's, he's a little bit special. Mateo, the eldest son born to this family in September 2017, was recently moved to a different enclosure for a rather unfortunate reason. They reach uh, an age where they need to be weaned and become independent. And sometimes it's a bit rough. The mum has another vital interest, which is uh, the new baby. And obviously she doesn't have time and energy to spend with the, with the older one. So he's been then pushed back and needs a new home. And we are collecting it and bringing it back uh, to Ireland with us. Training young gibbons is mum's job. Down below, Dad Alvin is watching the process from a safe distance. Eco is now reaching the age where he must start branching out on his own. The next stage for Eco now will be kind of trying to get a little bit of independence and exploring his enclosure a little bit further away from Mum. So that's kind of a big deal for a little baby given. It's a nerve-wracking process for the keepers. It'll be one little hand that will maybe hang on to a, a branch or something, but still be on Mum. He'll still go back to Mum if he's nervous, if he perceives anything as a threat. Um, he's still very much kind of clinging on to Mum. It's the same as anybody, any person growing up or anybody learning a, a, a new skill. Where's little one? Keepers are hoping Eco's natural instincts will kick in. If you get a given that's afraid of heights, it's probably not going to last that long, to be honest. But you always hope that he's going to learn and, and do things the way he should do. In the gibbon habitat, Mum Tilu is encouraging baby Eco to let go. They don't push them too hard, but they've really got to get on with it quite quickly. In the wild, if you're not learning to move on your own and um, eating on your own, then there's not much hope for you. That'll slowly progress to being off Mum a little bit further and then a little bit further again. And as little Eco starts to become more independent, then he'll start stretching his boundaries a little bit and, and trying to act a bit more like a gibbon. It seems like Eco is overcoming his fear of heights. And it's Dad Alvin who's finally pitching in. Never really saw Eco and his dad interacting that much, but now he's swinging over to him and slapping him in the head. Now he's getting his confidence up, he's, he's a little bit cheeky. You can see him swinging by one arm and just hanging from things. It's just a natural progression for him just to get stronger each day and more confident in what he can do. But as his confidence grows, so does the risk of something going wrong. Tilu's always got an eye on exactly how far he's pushing it, where he is. But obviously, you know, falling is a possibility. Once roaming across the Middle East and Asia in great numbers, the Asiatic line was hunted to the brink of extinction by the early 1900s. Today, there are less than 500 remaining in the wild. So having three born in captivity from first-time parents is quite a big deal.
up until now definitely been kept hidden under the hedgerow for their own safety, but uh, now they're getting to the point where she can't contain them. The herd is now made up of Ty's children and grandchildren. Two of the youngest are Harry and Barla. There's only a couple of months between them age-wise, so they've kind of grown up together from day one. Barla has always been a bit bigger than Harry, which also works quite well, because he wants to do all this rough play and push her around, which works quite well, because she's got a little bit of extra weight on him. Ty had a new baby a few days ago called Nandita. So Harry and Barla are no longer the youngest. Harry is still making his mind up about the new addition. It's a similar situation to when, when you know a family brings a new baby home. Um, you know, Harry is still getting suckled off his mum. Um, now this new baby's come along, all the adult females are interested in the new baby and they're, they're all stuck with him. That means he's getting his attention. Ouais, tout à fait, ouais. ils ont une grande force. Il y a cinq mois de gestation, donc c'est assez long pour un petit singe comme ça. Mais un bébé saïméré, il va naître déjà euh, fini, on va dire. Pas comme nous, c'est vrai qu'on est très assisté quand on est petit. Eux, euh, ils vont pouvoir s'accriper tout seuls au poil de leur maman euh, et dormir comme ça aussi également. Ils ont un truc dans le cerveau qui fait qu'ils peuvent dormir accrochés à leur maman, tout simplement. Ouais. So you can see they're quite big, quite active. So you're just weighing them? Yeah, just weighing them so that we have, um, you know, make sure that they're growing properly so far. And then, you know, if we notice anything with them in the future, we'll be able to have um, a figure. Oh, there we go. Okay, now let's have a look at what you've heard. Good job, okay. What have we got here? Oh, a little bit of wee-wee. All right, that's okay. You're very brave. So you're sexing them as well? Yes, so just trying to have a look. It is difficult when they're small. Now we're just going to do a little microchip. Hey, there we go. Now, there we go. Now, see, all done. No need to panic. That's a good job. Now, so... Oh, feisty. Finally, after four hours, Naya gives birth to a baby girl. But the calf isn't out of danger yet. She needs to suckle from mum straight away. Without that first shot of colostrum, their immune system and their energy levels are both going to be compromised. They need to get up and get going. The newborn tries her best. But mum seems reluctant. If a mother isn't allowing a calf to suckle, it's quite often because maybe that mother's an inexperienced animal and she's just not quite got into the swing of things yet. That's something we'll just have to keep a really close eye on. The calf is exhausted and hungry. Only time will tell if Nea's maternal instincts will kick in. At the Banteng stables, Nea's baby has been named Jin, meaning beautiful. She's now three days old. But keepers fear mum still isn't caring for the calf properly. There is a potential that she's not getting enough feeds from mum, maybe not enough nutrients, so she doesn't have the energy that the others have. Next door, two other babies have been born. Dewey, meaning goddess, and Bagus, meaning handsome. The other two calves are close to their mums and are running rings round them. 
plantain calves are full of beans. They have a lot of energy and they enjoy jumping around. It's yeah, definitely getting a bit crazy in there. They're probably getting a little bit of cabin fever at this point. They're probably getting a bit annoyed with each other. It's time for the herd to go outside again. But the temperature at Chester is far colder than the Banteng are used to. You all right, guys? Temperature gauge is reading 10, is it? It's about 11, yeah. We will let them out, give them access, let them stretch their legs, but then we'll make sure they come back in and are kept nice and warm. Come on. It's not exactly tropical, but we're able to now let the mother and the calves out for the first time. <laughs> Straight away, Dewey and Bagus make the most of being outside. But Jin doesn't seem to have the energy to play. It might be that she's cold and she's trying to keep warm and therefore not moving. After an hour, the two new calves are ready to follow their mums inside. Come yeah, on! But as the herd returns to the stables, Jin is left behind. It is unusual for Jin not to be following the mother around. The herding instinct in Bantang is so strong, we would have expected that behaviour to be in full development now. Drawn by powerful herd instinct, Nea finally heads in alone. For a species that's so critically endangered, every individual is really important. So leaving Jin outside on her own could be really detrimental to her health. It could lead to her dying if, if we're not careful. Mother in the world outside. It's good news for the Magua bandits. 11 new arrivals take their numbers to 29. The first public event is a scent marking ceremony. Boss Ila licks, sniffs, and marks the wide-eyed babies before the whole group joins in. It's important for every member to mark the new babies, formally recognizing them as the bandit's newest recruits. Unexpectedly, a late face appears from the den, a twelfth baby, tiny, and with his eyes still shut tight. This is Kisu but there's something different about him. Kisu's eyes should be open already, and he's much smaller than the other babies. be a burden to the group. Nevertheless, Ila gives him the seal of approval. Kisu is accepted. Adults often care for the nearest youngster. Young may stick close to one adult, but not necessarily their birth parent. 